Right then. Take a seat. Thank you. Oh no. So I've known Scott for obviously from when he first started playing for Bristol City 25 years ago. Well I've known him as a player for a long, long time, but as a friend, probably the last 10, 12 years. And I'm honoured to say that he is a friend. You try to get me to cry, are you? <laughs> it's a privilege to have Scott still around the, the club. He brings so much. Anyone who meets Scott, he radiates energy. He's, he's a great, he's a great person. He's always looking to help, and you know that that cuts across from from being a great representative of the club to the, all the community stuff. He automatically ends up doing because he wants to and he wants to help people. So, you know, as a as a fan and and then as a as a club as well, it's, it's someone who's who's great great to have around. He's on a small list of people that have played for Bristol City that Bristol Rovers fans even show admiration for. He's the only person I know who's always in a good mood. Always, how are you Sir Jeff? How are you Sir Jeff? Bad accent, but um, gr great guy, um, loads of energy, and will always do something for someone else before doing something for himself. He never says no, no, always yes. Which is why he's such a lovely guy. He has a wonderful smile and it has the power to bring sunshine into people's lives. And you can't help responding to him. And you can tell he loves people. There's never a no with Scott. Um, it, it, it's always, yes, what you want, how do you want it, if he can do it personally. And even when we've got him to do like presentations for the local football teams, the kids' teams, the adult teams, which is great on both, he'll never accept nothing. And the last couple of years, He's been helping the youngsters in South Bristol from bringing football shirts, um, signing shirts for them, giving them the confidence, I would say, and inspiration as youngsters, just making them a little bit confident. City fans quite rightly adore Scott Murray. Um, but interesting to me, the Rovers fans, the gas heads I know, they've all got this real deep respect for him. Um, that's well end from his perspective, because he does so much for so many people. He's always, he's always front of the line. If there's something to be done, he'll be there. Whether that's food delivery during lockdowns, whether it's, you know, I see him when there's somebody walking past Ashton Gate, certainly back in the day, and, and he'd go, do you want to come and have a look? You know, I know, I know that's not community work as, as such, but that just shows you his attitude. Any, anybody, he can help, he will help, and always willing to, to go out and be part of the community. It's really just a case of nothing's too much trouble, and he will always help. It only takes a, a text message um, or a quick phone call, and he'll drop what he's doing and support Children's Hospital Southwest with whatever he can. Some of the things that he's done, you know, during lockdown, he would pop up on a Zoom call for some you know, football team, some youth team. Um, he would be representing Bristol City at weddings, at funerals, um, going into schools, always looking for opportunities to, to spread the word and just to try and put a smile on people's faces. He'd done something last year on Christmas Day. Um, there was a shout, there was training, so they had training, and someone had asked for something. He rung me and he said, Sean, I forgot, and he came to here, to the, the, this pub, um, after training to drop off a shirt for something he promised which he forgot which was a Christmas present prior to going for his Sunday dinner do you know new sort of thing he's going above and beyond there Scott does loads for our community for our Robbins Foundation and, and he does a lot of it without being asked and certainly not for the recognition um, you'll always find him doing a, a school awards a delivery uh, in the food deliveries during lockdown as well and he's a great ambassador for the club and he does it because he wants to and off his own back and, and, and then he has a great relationship with, with the community and with individuals as well. So he's, he's a real credit to himself and to the club. I think for the families that we support, it's all about making memories. It's about making the most of every day. And having the exposure um, and airtime with Scott has been invaluable and it's really helped make those memories. I've just admired the amount of work that he's done for the community. It's, it's been non-stop doesn't seek any recognition for it at all. He does hospital visits to children in the hospital. Uh, he does everything. He, he, he Charity football matches. Anybody that goes to talk to Scotty, he's got time for. And he's just a great man. He throws his arms around everybody, which is wonderful. It gives everybody a lovely warm feeling. And um, he's just full of fun.
and he makes life happy, and I think that's very important. I think Bristol City Football Club have been and are exceptionally lucky to have Scott Murray, and I think the city of Bristol is equally fortunate to have Scott Murray in its midst. That's the best way I can say about him. He's just an absolute legend. Is that two or three words? He's a great, great man. I'm proud to know him. Fun, energetic, legend. Just can't speak highly enough of him. Like, you know, he's a one-off. I don't know. Keep on doing it. Everybody loves you. I think you're close to getting the key to the city. Um, and yeah, here's to another 25 years. Great ambassador. And great human being. First up, Scott, how, how does watching <coughs> that video make you feel? Um, well, people I really know well, and as I said, um, when, you, when you hear people saying nice things about you, it's, it's fantastic, and as I said, um, I'm glad I make, make them all happy. Common theme from this video, and obviously all the messages that you received at the weekend surrounding your 25th anniversary of signing for the club, is you'll always go above and beyond and you're never going to say no. Are you quite aware of the impact that you, you've had on people's lives? I, no, I remember, I remember, um, remember back when I was a kid. I think, um, I've, I've said this story before, we, me and my brother and family always went to Butlins every year, yeah. every year. And then um, I remember one year an Aberdeen player come um, and, and handed out the trophies. And um, I, I remember how happy me and my brother were when we received that. So I think um, if I can give half what he gave to me when I was a kid, then there you go. And, and you know what? My time costs nothing at all. It's listen. It's it's a, it's a pleasure. And and you know what? I do them because I want to do them. I really enjoy doing stuff, especially the community stuff and go around co coaching kids footy teams. I, I enjoy doing it. So there's no reason why I wouldn't. Seven, eight years old, being an Aberdeen fan as a kid, and um, seeing one of your favourite football players come up and and hand out your your certificate or your or your trophy made it all worthwhile and as I said if I can if I can do that for kids in Bristol then why would I not do it? And this interview is obviously centred around the 25th anniversary of you signing for the club. How special is this club and city to you? Even when I first came to Bristol, as soon as I signed, um, fitted in perfectly with the with the lads were all young head cases. They were all Bristolians. And um, as I said it, it felt like it felt like home then. And um, the fact that 25 years later, I'm, I'm still here. I think it, it speaks volume. And it, this, the, the city in general is a lovely city to live in. Everyone's really friendly, even the blue side, of, they're always really friendly towards me as well. So I think, um, as I said, it's, it's definitely home for me. And looking at that time on the pitch here at the club, 426 appearances, 90 odd goals, what are your standout moments from your career, do you say? Um, promotions. I think promotions are, at the start of the season. That's where you want to get promotion. And as I said, I was lucky enough to have a couple. I think um, obviously I, I got a hat trick, scored a hat trick, and being being a wide player, usually usually create goals. And as I said, I scored a hat trick, and that was a big thing. Um, LDV, Johnson's Paintman, and them. I think they're they're all big things. It, even me, as a little kid from a little village in Scotland, playing at Wembley in front of eighty thousand, is I sound like Carl Froch now, do. It's like, um, no, I just need stuff like that. This, do you know what? I used to kick a ball against the wall back home at school, and to think that I, I played the, the amount of games you just said there, is, it's um, so far beyond my wildest dreams, it's unbelievable. You touched on one of those moments there, obviously, 0203 for the Football, Football League trophy. You won it there alongside your now lifelong friends. That's a, obviously a moment it's, you're going to cherish. Do you know what? It's, it's class. And, 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 and playing in big like cup, that's our FA Cup final. Then the Johnson's paint and stuff like that. And it's, it's just as I said to, to play the, the Millennium Stadium, the the Wembley, the old Wembley. It's just, I've been very lucky. And as I said, it's um, it's taken a hell of a lot of hard work. I think people need to realise it's not, it's not all playing sailing. There's a lot of downs more than ups really. And and um, as I said, um, I've been, I've been very lucky with my career and enjoyed every single minute of it. Obviously, 25 years since you signed. There was a couple of those years where you were, weren't here, but went at Reading. But then you almost jumped at the chance to come back. It, like you said, it, it felt like home for you. It didn't did. It? I, and, and realistically, I probably didn't want to leave in the first place. It was just one of them things. I had a, a stupid season the season before, scoring quite a lot of goals for a wide man. So I think, uh, and because Reading were in the league above, it, I think it was, it was probably a no-brainer. But I think um, 
I think I didn't even last a year, so it was good. We got, it must be the only Scotsman that got homesick at Bristol, so soon come back home. And in those years when you came back, obviously promotion from League One in 06, 07, I can imagine that was a great dressing room to be a it part was, of. It was fantastic. I think, um, I, th I think when we got promoted, we went on a boat, I think, afterwards celebrating. And it's, I think it's quite, if I'm being honest, I think none of us were home. So I think uh, we went straight from the club, more or less straight to the boat. <laughs> so we all had the same gear on we had the night before. I think me and Lee and Fontaine have actually turned up with the same cardigan on as well. So it's just, it was great times. And as I said, I've been blessed with the, the, the dress rooms I've been in. They've all been very lively. And following on from the year, you didn't get as much playing time as, as you probably would have particularly wanted. Um, but to get to Wembley again, Class. What a, a massive feat in itself, and, and yeah, that, I just think could make that last. I was getting towards the end of my career, and as I said, um, to be fair to the, to the gaffer Gary Johnson, he's probably kept me a couple of years longer than he should have. I think, if I'm being honest, and as I said, just to be involved in the squad, and as I said, going to Wembley, and obviously the not the the ending we wanted, but I think for the for the club to be that close to get to the Premier League is is unbelievable. And as I said, we've got plenty more years to hopefully accomplish that at some point. And after your playing career, obviously you've had a continuation of your relationship here with the club. You've done a multitude of things. You've been involved with the coaching, commercial team, but obviously you're now in your current role as a kit man. And that is a role that gives you so much joy, as it seems. It is. I think um, working in the commercial department was an eye opener. I think um, the, hardest, the hardest part was you phoning up clubs on a Monday morning. I think, um, and then if you got beat on Saturday, it's it's quite hard to sit, try and sell hospitality and all that, so I don't envy the, the, the people up in the commercial, that's for sure. And I think, uh, as I said, then I, I got a phone call from Derek McInnes asking if I fancied being kept man. So I think I was, I was turning 37, I was, I was playing part-time at Bath, obviously working full-time commercial and it was a no-brainer because the old legs were, the body was shutting down, so it was, it was a no-brainer for me. And whilst you're fulfilling these roles, you're continually out doing things within the city. I can imagine it's so heartwarming for yourself to see those reactions from so many people uh, that when, when you go, um, go to those presentations, etc. It's class. And you know what, the, the food banks are massive. I think a couple of years ago, and obviously the lockdowns and everything, George and the, the catering staff over there did unbelievably. And I think uh, unless you've actually seen it for your own eyes, the amount of work that actually people went through in the food bank's time, it was, it was unbelievable. And, and um, as I said, we were there more or less every day doing the same thing every day, and then driving up to Filton and driving up to different food banks, delivering food, it was, it was a different class. And as I said, me and Matt Parsons were getting up first thing in the morning, straight to the stadium, packing stuff up, straight away, and then, you know what, we were doing it the next day. And it, was actually, it, was, it was nice just to get out of the, the, the house or the flat and just to go in and interact with people more than anything. And for you, like you said before, it doesn't, it doesn't take too much of your time, does it? And it makes no. so much more of a difference. It's, uh, listen, it, and it was not like we were doing much during lockdown anyway, so I think, uh, as I said, when, um, when we got a phone call asking if we'd like me, they jumped at the chance, and as I said, it's, it's even doing like kids' presentations, kids' footy training sessions. Kids' footy training sessions now and a half my time. It's, listen, there's plenty of hours in a day, and that's, that's, the fact that it takes up a couple of hours of my time, it's, it's good fun. I, enjoy, I probably enjoy it more than the kids, definitely. And lastly, uh, it might be a little bit difficult for you to, but would you be able to sum up what Bristol City as a club and Bristol as a city means to you? It's, um, do you know, it's a family. It's my, it's my extended family, and um, as I said, um, and Bristol, Bristol is a city home. So it's it's two things I I really enjoy doing. I I love coming to work every day, coming to the the high performance centre. And as you said, the last 25 years, the, the change in the club has been unbelievable. I think um, we're very lucky to have the, the owners that we have and, and the, the people that have worked behind the scenes at the football club. And we all, we all want the same thing. We want to get Premier League football and touch wood at some point, hopefully within the next 25 years, it's, we get it done. So I think, uh, as you said, it's a family for me and it's, it's my home. Thank you for joining us, Bill. Pleasure. I think I have to go and phone all them now and tell them. <laughs>